One night in November of 2006, I was on a tiny sailboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, no land in sight, and looking up at a sky so full of stars, they dripped to the horizon and reflected in the sea, which if I leaned over far enough, I could touch. The vessel was 30 feet long. That's about two car lengths, the distance you're supposed to park from a stop sign. Track and field Olympians can jump 29 feet. If Jesse Owens were alive today, he could probably jump the length of the boat I was on. 30 feet is a long way to jump, but it's not a lot of boat. The only other person on board, the captain, was sound asleep below. He was a romantic, this sailor, a young guy with a very old soul who built the boat himself according to tradition, which meant the hull was wood, the sails were hand-stitched, and we were navigating with pencils, rulers, and paper charts. Looking at the sky of the ancients above me, it was easy to imagine I was one of them. I hadn't seen land in days. I was alone at the tiller and with my thoughts. I was pondering the universe, contemplating the great questions, until I had to pee and then my brain had to concentrate on not falling overboard while pulling down my pants and trying to use the bucket that doubled as a bathroom. Grabbing onto the lifelines, I silently cursed the person who tricked me into this 2,800 mile transatlantic crossing on a boat with no engine, no refrigeration, and no bathroom by christening the journey an odyssey. Do it, goddammit, do it, he had urged. This is my dream. Good to know it was somebody's because it wasn't mine. One of the sailors from where we set sail called me an adventurous a word nobody ever had used to describe me. I was from Philadelphia, a place known for lawyers, not adventuresses. My dream had been more like having it all traditional version, successful career, husband, children, and I had gotten so close. I had the great apartment and an exciting, sometimes even glamorous job as a TV news reporter. I covered murders and mob trials, elections and politics and corruption. The payoff pitch. He struck him out. Championship games. And the Philadelphia Phillies have won the National League pennant. And weather. Lots of weather. Blizzards, floods, heat waves, nor'easters, and the occasional hurricane. I covered all the big stories in a big gritty city and had shelves of awards to prove I was good at it. I had met, just in time, the man I thought I was going to marry. Until on our last New Year's Eve together, I found out he had been out shopping, not for a ring, but a new gig in Baghdad. I wanted to have kids and spend summers at the Jersey Shore. He wanted to be a war correspondent in the desert, and that was the end of that story. Turned out Philadelphia had adventures after all. Heartbroken, I threw myself into work. A strategy my friend and co-worker, Jasmine, Jazz for short, thought was deranged. Jazz believed what I needed was a vacation, an opinion she expressed in the doorway of my office every few days for what seemed like months. One morning, to shut her up, I handed her my visa and told her to book a trip anywhere in the Caribbean. She chose St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands, a place I knew nothing about that was about to change my life. I'm Margie Smith-Holt, and I wrote Not on Any Map, One Virgin Island, Two Catastrophic Hurricanes, and the True Meaning of Paradise, available now wherever you buy your books. <laughs>